The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. The astronauts are in the oh. house, everybody. Welcome back to our old friend, Catherine yes. Bennell Pegg. Hey, Peggy. And you've brought a friend <laughs> with you. Do you want to introduce her, Catherine? I have. I've brought the amazing Shauna Panja. Shauna is absolutely incredible. We met 15 years ago as students at, at NASA. At NASA High. And we were <laughs> <laughs> That's like Sweet Valley night. Oh. So you, you were drawn to each other in, at NASA High, as I call it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. So, um, yeah, we went on a zero-G plane together and since we've both been writing our own stories on our way to space and it's so wonderful to have met again today here in Perth. Oh were God. you doing different, studying different parts or in different sections of NASA when you were both there at the same time? Yeah, so I was there for a summer program all about leveraging technology to do um, big things for humanity and address grand challenges. NASA, um, uh, Catherine was there for the International Space University summer program, um, but we spent <laughs> a lot of time together and it was, it was, it was like Disneyland for nerds, essentially. Oh, you would be unbelievable. unbelievable. I'd love to do it, but you need math, don't you? You really do need math? Math is an important tool, but actually mm. to work in space, there's jobs not just in STEM fields, but any kind of job you put the word space in front of can be a job. We need <laughs> space, space hairdresser. Experts, space, right? space, yeah. plumber. space plumber. Absolutely. Yeah. There's no space gym space plumber. Space, station space, space, the right. space gym's mowing. Imagine, <laughs> imagine the right. Uh, Sean, I wanted to ask you, being a physician and being uh, involved in space, I, I did see a thing where you, you mentioned the fact that space essentially is out there to kill you. So being a physician is a very important role, being on a space station or anywhere of like that. So what kind of things would you have to do to be able to help people. Oh, well, she'd need to box the Panadol Rapid. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Number absolutely. One. So, yeah, essentially, if you take nothing else away from, from space, is that space is trying to kill you. And um, <laughs> every aspect of yeah. the spaceflight environment, from the increased radiation to the weightlessness, has an impact on the body. Yes. And so, one of the, the famous bits of trivia is that because your bones lose density and your muscles lose mm. mass. And you get shorter. No, taller? Yeah. You get taller? You that, can get yes. taller because your spine yes. decompresses. Yes. And yes. so, astronauts up on the station famously have to work out for two hours a day doing aerobic and resistive exercise six days a week so if you don't like working out but you want to go to space better start changing those habits yeah, now. yeah right. Right. Um, what yes. can you bench in space <laughs> <laughs> is it easier or harder just a couple of cars <laughs> yeah. I, I mean if you're if you're simply trying to to bench uh, yes. you know weight then yeah. you know you can t- say to someone you bench 600 no, that's yes. fine no. um, the way they do it in space is they have the advanced advanced resistive exercise device the Arids device, so it's based on hydraulics and resistance, so yeah, you right. can actually oh, wow. um, lift lift weights yeah. in air quotes in space. So you're talking about the body, right, in space, and um, there's a joke that ever since we were in primary school was what's the definition of gross farting in the space suit? So, can you fart in space? And if so, what if you fart in the space suit, is it gross? Go. Well, yes, you can. Uh, absolutely. You can? I didn't know. Otherwise, yep. we'd, you know, blow up. Like I don't big know. Yes. But in a spacesuit, there's lots of air filtration, fortunately. Also, on the space station, there's air flu. Otherwise, you'd be surrounded yeah. in, a, in a gas bubble of okay. your own making. Yeah, right. So, it's right. a bit like being in really a plane. <laughs> in that sense, Indeed. Yeah. On, the f- uh, on the fart thing. <laughs> <laughs> prick my ears, but uh, you can't have fizzy drinks in space because you can't burp. That's right? That's, yeah, that's correct, um, which is kind of uh, a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Anyone who knows me knows I'm addicted to sparkling water or okay. soda, but you know, if that's what it takes yes. to get to oh space, I'm willing to take one for the team <gasps> so here. Now, pack a soda what about like yeah. the possibility of a legit medical emergency? Like somebody on the space station for example might need actual a, surgery. an appendectomy or you know, yeah. there's some sort of medical emergency. Is it possible to do surgery up there? So my, one of my favourite bits of space trivia is that they have done surgery in space before. Yes. It was on baby mice. Mm. Um, so oh, some, really? of the, okay. some of the earlier shuttle experiments, they looked at doing um, discectomy, so spinal cord surgery on these baby yep. mice. And so basically Velcro is your friend. Yeah, Velcro. You, so you Velcro your tools down so they're not flying everywhere, so it's not a mess. Yes. And then the, the physics of blood in space is such that it more um, glues to itself rather okay. than goes oh. everywhere. So you simply take your gauze and wake okay. it away. It. Is there yeah. like uh, up up there? Do they have general anaesthetic, and is that sent up there just in case? There is an advanced life support respiratory pack. Right. Um, so if they do need to manage an airway in space, that capability exists. They have twenty four seven coverage yeah. from the flight surgeons on Earth. So uh, there's a crew medical officer that also has training, and there's all of these medical supply kits. There's mm. even a defibrillator on station. Yep. Okay, never been used. Yep. Luckily, yeah, I know. I'll be worried about the electrics. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> 
obviously not. they're sending physically fit and yeah. able people up there, but you never know. Like but, things but, can happen. But right? also, like, say, is there been? A, can there be an operation that can't be done? Right, so you can't do the procedure, and they have to get them back to earth, and there's a you, you got to wait for a shuttle to come. What, what yeah. happens in that scenario? I mean, a lot of the scenarios yeah. where there might be an emergency, they prefer to bring you back to ground yes. in low Earth orbit on the space station. It can often be faster to get you yeah. back. So, but what about those two that shuttle ready to go? Yeah, like yeah. Well, what about I mean, them? there's a bus stop schedule in effect to the space station. <laughs> yeah. Like every three months or more, there's usually a vehicle going up, but it's all tightly scheduled. So the two astronauts up there that you know stayed longer than they thought, they could come back if we had to bring. Back. So there yeah. is an emergency okay. one ready to go. There's an emergency yeah, there's Uber. So you can call mum and dad there's and enough they seats for everyone to come back. So, 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 so now you ring the ambulance and the ambulance shuttle goes and gets you. <laughs> Absolutely. So for example, for appendicitis, if you get appendicitis yes. yep. up there, the the plan is, you know, you give people antibiotics and yeah. bring them back. It's yeah. your first I'd love to see the um, ambulance shuttle going up there. Yes, like, they're going up there and then like, and then, like it's going on and then the satellites move out of the way. Shauna, can you tell me about the the dangers of space dust or moon dust? Because that's one of the big deals up there, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So now we're thinking about the further missions, and this is really timely because there are plans to send astronauts to the moon, including the first woman and first person mm, of color no. to the moon, so starting exciting. with the Artemis missions. And so we know from the Apollo missions that lunar dust is a very potent eye, skin, and respiratory irritant. So it'll just, it's like fine talc powder, it gets everywhere. Yeah, no. So for anyone who says that we faked the moon landing, we put a lot of effort into generating those thousands of pages of of biomedical documentation around it. And so now the question is, you know, is that based on that one landing site from the Apollo missions? What does the um, lunar dust toxicity look like at the South Pole? How do we mitigate for it? How do we make spacesuits that are more... Um, repellent to this this dust. So these are all considerations mm. that yep. the next generation of astronauts need to think about. So, yeah, I think about having like about a hundred Dyson stick vacuum yeah. cleaners just mm. surrounding the um yeah can you can you just suck it in like dust? You, there's lots of cool um it, pr uh, proposals out there to think about how we get rid of the dust. So it does have an ionic charge. So thinking mm. about creating a repellent oh. charge to get rid of it to mm. send it the other way. Um this that's is a so microfiber Star Trek. cloth. Yeah. Right yeah. Right sorry, I'm so weird. <laughs> Voyager here, right yeah. now with Jane White. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things Australia is really good at from our mining and resources sector, we're good at right. handling dusty environments. Really? So when we're yeah. sending our rover up there within the decade, Rover, it's called, <laughs> we'll be looking at the dust as one of the things we're trying to understand up there oh. to help astronauts. Hey, third in 2410. Um, if anyone has any questions at all, um, uh, you know, only if they're good enough. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and by the way, the fart one's keep keep taken. The fart one's <laughs> taken. But if you've got a question about space, we yes. know that space is so like happening right now. Give us a call, 13 24 it's not 10. very often we have two astronauts two. in the house. Shauna, can we just go through some of your... Yeah. We've got the list of your certifications. So this is what you're certified in. Solo skydiving, mm. advanced <laughs> open water dry suit, nitrox and rescue diving. I've done that. You're working towards your private <laughs> pilot's licence. You can speak English, French, Gujarati and you dab in some Spanish and Russian. You sing, you play the piano and you hold, this is my favourite, a black belt in Taekwondo mm. and you've trained in Muay Thai in Thailand and you've where you won a fight as well. Now, look, a lot of people are saying that's a lot, but I have to say there's one thing missing and that is you don't speak Klingon. <laughs> 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 I, I just haven't got to that part of the for? astronaut curriculum yeah. yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure yeah, I, it's I, imminent. I, I used um, some of your astronaut training um, I've been building this box that I got from my garden, uh, from, from my um, balcony. It's like a storage box, a wood one. Anyway, it came completely disassembled and it's all wrong. All the holes are different and stuff. And I kept on going to Bunnings like every five minutes to go and get something to fix a solution. And then I was just, no, I'm not spending any more money on this box. I'm going to do what the, you do on a shuttle and that is use the things in this room to be able to fix the problem. So, um, anyway. It's Paper clips, the whole <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It just got completed. It just oh, got completed. Yeah. It took you what, Apollo 13? But that's how clue you guys have to be to be able to, like, you know, use what's in front of you and then hopefully get out of a survival, which is life or death, because no one can come. That's crazy. Do you, does that pressure get to you or... 
No, I think it's really thrilling about like, the it's opportunity thrilling. to be able to contribute to so much research in space and to be able to handle lots of scenarios that we are planning for and that the ones that we can't the through ones our training. You don't plan for. That is it's like the Bush mechanic. You've seen that on yes. SBS? No, exactly. Exactly. It's like the Bush same. mechanic. Uh, so you're like a fashion I think Possum as a, as a fan model. Yes, model's 100%. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Catherine, uh, off air before when the song was playing, mm. you mentioned um, G Force training. That always is a thing that fascinates me because we see in. Uh, you know, the fighter pilots and they're just going up and doing all that stuff. But you've got to be able to take a certain amount of G-forces when you're doing that stuff. Can you tell us what kind of training that is and what level you can get up to in terms of force? We do kind of two kinds of G-force training. The one is the zero-G plane flights and the other is where we get spun up in a centrifuge to feel like the the G-forces of launch and re-entry. Yeah. And um, we went on the centrifuge in the Netherlands and we spun up to 6G going through the launch and re-entry profiles for the two main kinds of vehicles that people go up into day and it was really amazing I couldn't wipe the smile off my face but for pilots when you see them they feel the g-force like head to foot that's yeah. why you often see their face yes. contort and pass out for astronauts we actually feel it front to back it's like having five of you sit on mm. your chair right um, or, so you have sorry to how can you smile I know I jumped in there but how can you smile and think that's fun that's so fun. Sean can't go on a ride. I thought you were asking the question of whether you can smile You've got an elephant, got an elephant <laughs> sitting on your chest. Basically, but the thing is, the capsule we're in was dark. And, I mean, aside from, you know, you didn't have the, launch, the vibrations and the sound of launch, but you definitely could imagine yourself going through the launch and re-entry in real time. And, you know, for all of us on the training, it was yes. our dream. And it was just the closest we got to physically to feeling that. It was amazing. So, okay, I, can, I can help you out with this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've, I've done the same training. Yes. I did it in the U.S. And it, it really did does feel like, you know, there is an elephant sitting on your chest, but there is a specific way you get around it, and it's called pursed lip breathing. So if you want to train like okay. astronauts, okay. you can do it, it here it in the studio. Yes. So just pretend you're breathing through a straw, right. and just breathe... <sighs> I'm sure this is riveting radio yes, for everyone. Exactly. No, 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 yes, yes, yes. And, and what's what that look joint? At that. Yeah, so this is this is helping you distribute, like get get in the airflow and distribute it to your lungs, uh, even with all of those G forces so sitting on your chest. If you're on Earth, an elephant actually sits on your chest, will this work? <laughs> There's only one way That's to test that. Okay. Let's right. go on in. Let's go on in. Hey, I want to talk about um, an episode of Big Bang Theory. Uh, Ra, uh, sorry, um, Howard's up in space. He's speaking to Bernadette. He's been up there for a while, and he goes, Bernadette, please. This is his wife. Will you just drop a pen for me? And she goes, why? Well, he goes, I just want to send <laughs> see gravity. And she yes. drops a pen and you go, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> Do astronauts miss gravity? Well, when they come back, they miss having lack of gravity. It's common for astronauts when they come back to, you know, put a glass of water in the air and let go. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> They get the gravity blues. And if you want to embarrass a recently returned astronaut, throw them something to catch. Because yeah, right. they cannot catch because they're used to things they travelling in straight some... lines, yeah. right? Instead oh. of a parabola. And also, if you're going to wow. throw something to someone, it takes a minute to get to you. Yeah. Because oh. if you ditch something it's in space, it doesn't, uh, if you ditch a, a baseball, it, it, it slows down straight away, doesn't it? No, it still moves. Oh, really? It just I, doesn't have like the arc of falling to the ground in the way that you can see. So, yeah, yeah, so you get your knuckleball won't work. work. Yeah, it would definitely hurt. Okay, great. Good to know that. bump their heads a lot when they push off one side of the space station to move around, you have to be careful not to go too fast, otherwise you might whack your head on the other side. And that's something that Shauna and I practiced together once what? on a zero-G flight. When you're first in one of these vomit comets yes. and the floor falls away, you realise really fast you shouldn't jump, yep. right? And you have this oh. urge to swim and oh. kick and you have to really control that because you move around like a ping-pong ball if you don't do slow, controlled movement. Right. Oh. The, the rookie move for anyone who's never flown zero-G is to just undo their seatbelts and launch them <laughs> Yes. And then they quickly realize there's there's a ceiling there when their head meets it. Um, so I've done eleven <laughs> parabolic flights now oh. for research flights, and oh. you realize that the you know the way to move around is just using finger touch to oh. kind of just yeah, gracefully. Right. So like you're Superman, you're controlling your powers. So you're gliding. Yeah, Literally, yeah, not, it's, yeah. It's this freeze. This is such a freeing experience, and you also get to use this incredible environment to do some pretty cool science too. Wow. Shauna, tell us about that fight you had. <laughs> the one that you won. Because when we look at you... To, That's what to you want to take picture, away from this. Is it this incredible astronaut? You I, know, know, I, 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 so I, I think super intelligent people fight differently. I think Shauna walks up there and basically does the Vulcan <laughs> on the you know, pressure points. You know, once you get to a, a, a certain level, so once you get to the black belt level in Taekwondo, um, so I've competed at the world level, it really is more of a strategy game. It is like chess. It's not just simply who can get in more hits. Mm. It's who 
you can control the ring. It's and not so, MMA, Sean. <laughs> no, no. So translating that to, to the astronaut yeah. world, it is about preparation and thinking of all the possibilities and the best and worst case scenarios. So, you know, there is actually a lot of overlap yeah. there. And if there's ever a knock on the door, Sean, and someone's there with the ray gun, you go, Sean! All right. Well, we appreciate you coming in. It's oh a God. joy to have you back, uh, Catherine. Because <gasps> when you were here last time, I was like, "Oh my God, she's amazing!" I tell you what, I want you guys to and come back. And now there's more of you. <laughs> Every go- time you come back, you have to bring an extra yeah, one. Yeah. So we want oh, three next pleasure. time. I want you. I want you to both to come back, and then I would love to do a, a like a dinner or a lunch where our listeners can come and just some um, actually sit there and eat with you guys. Because I tell you what, for me, of the people that you would have dinner with, you know, the celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. I'd have astronauts there yeah. straight yeah. away. Yeah, so so let's let's make you know up the ante. I want to convince Catherine to come fly with us, <gasps> yes. and then and then we come back into studio yes. and we yes. talk about our flight together. So yes. Catherine, if you're up for it, you know. Oh. 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 Yeah. I don't want to speak for Catherine, but I think she's up for it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> <Can you tell? laughs> Thank you so Thanks, much gosh. for coming in. It's been a joy meeting you, Shauna and Catherine. You're welcome back. As yeah. you know, you're you're the fourth member of our team now, so you're, oh. you're welcome. Yeah. I know, as, as always, uh, to infinity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. It's the thing that changed the world, really, isn't it? The iPhone. Massively. The, phone, the Massively. smartphones. Yeah. Unbelievable. Think about it. If you think you've lost your phone, think about that feeling you get in your guts. Yeah. I, it happened to me at Bunnings the other day. Oh, my God. I was um, I was in, like, um uh, one of the aisles with the guy and he's you, you know when they just take you to each aisle because they know where it is? Yeah. And, like, you lose track because usually, you know, you, you, you know that you're in aisle eight. And then I went, oh, my God, I think I was in front of some plug things and I was running through Bunnings in a panic because I thought and even, and then my phone was not well, Bunnings runnings Bunnings runnings no, I don't do Bunnings runnings it's slippery floor sometimes and, I, um, and I'd taken my phone off lock so it was just there all open as oh, well all and open ready to go like, oh. but uh, the technology is really awesome right now in the new software update you can now Google specific things in your photo Sean and will pull that photo up oh. remember the years ago we mm. said that should happen yeah 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 and then so yeah, someone sure. went and did it mm. uh, follow through follow no. through can you follow through, follow through. Follow follow through. Follow follow Apple's We're not making its money. So the other thing about phones now is um, you can track anyone wherever you want to go, mm-hmm. right? So this is interesting. Exports, experts are warning about a worrying relationship red flag, right? Almost a quarter of Aussies think it's reasonable to expect to have a partner's device codes and more than one in ten think it's reasonable to expect to track a partner using social uh, media location sharing apps. Okay, so that's 10%, though. That's not a great deal, no. but yep. still... Yeah, I think that's always been a thing in people's relationships where there has been a sticking yeah, point yeah. sometimes. Now, they're saying it's a red flag because there is digital coercion. So, basically, someone can be tracking you yeah. and, like, you know... It, well, it's, it's a way, it's a way to control. control. It, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's finding out where it's you are word. at all times. Yeah. But, I, I mean, there's a difference between, say, the woman saying, I'm going out tonight... Mm. Yes. I'll share my location so that you can see as a as an extra mm. layer of protection. Yeah. It's when the the coercive or a mm. coercive partner is, is going, where are you it, going? Why is one hundred percent um expecting to be able to do that. Yeah. It's the expectations. Who who's asking for yeah. it, I think. Yeah. Is the difference. Yeah. So do you I see mean, what I'm saying, yeah. John? You so, look like yeah. you look like you're really thinking about no, it. Oh, because because one of my mates was lost in Melbourne over the weekend yes. and his wife was ringing another one of our friends yes. saying, God, you know, you gotta where find him. He yeah. doesn't know where he is, he's so blind. Like yeah. Absolutely paralytic. On that, that, occasion, that would be a great. That, that would be a great, great point. If you're going out on the town and you're in an unfamiliar location, that's a great time to share your location. Isn't that insane? Isn't it? Because you think about okay, if a guy, when you hear about this and you think a guy, you think that's a bit controlling. When you hear about a girl, you think that's a bit nagging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It's, and you, it's yeah. the same. Yeah, it's, it's, the same. it's a lack so, of trust either yes. way. It's what is what it's suggesting. So, yeah. Sean, yes. your relationship. Yes. Um, it, it's everything open, right? So when you get married, right? So I'm, I'm imagining a world, Natalie. All right. So we're both there. We're there. Husbands, we've uh, had a great time, and your sure. husband's so good looking. Of he's a writer he is. and rich. Um, <laughs> he's a writer. Sure, I was he wears say, a lo- loose card again. Right, so, so you know, you're with your partner. Do you let them know everything about you, or is there something that's none of their business? Well, I think there's a couple of things that none of their. Well, what's none of their? What's none of their business? Megan can get in my phone whenever she wants if she yeah. needs to see something. That's that's no problem at all. Um, what about if your she burner was phone? Doing that on a re- <laughs> well, that's completely. <laughs> but if she was regularly checking stuff now. Yes. Yeah. Hang on a second, yeah. that's none of your there's business. There's a difference between like being able thing. to yeah. and actually yeah. doing it all so the time, isn't there? Yeah. And then there's also, so there's that part of it, or checking out 
do I does she do I need to know where she is? She would probably say the same about me. Does yeah. I do I need to know where she yes. is? Not not all the time. But take um, take it away from fine. Is there anything else that's none of her business? Oh, I'd say ban- horses. No bank account. Bank account. My bank account's none of her business. Well, no, Outside. she's got access to all my accounts, right? Because you but said she drains she, them every day. <laughs> there's one. There's one that I the use Caymans. for myself. Like if I go to the, the pub, that, that's it for me. Mm. And I don't appreciate. Her looking at that one, looking at that Tar. one, because that's your fun one. All to see. Because that's where all the money is. No, it's probably not. It's not. It's probably <laughs> that's not. That's where all the spending not, is. It's probably not looking at it, but make, possibly making comment on it because it's none of your business. You know what I mean? <laughs> what don't, about, you, don't you do? Don't you do the math in my bank account? That's my money. What about uh, the private horses? The secret horses. No, nah, they, well, they're have. private, so that's completely yeah. different yeah, story. So you don't want her to find yeah. out that's about them. I mean, know about them. Okay, yeah. we are we're getting into your relationship, yeah. right? So drop the walls. We want to know if there is something in your relationship that is none of your partner's business, mm. right? It's How not that you're this? keeping secrets. It's just that you How don't think they business? need to know. Oh, is everything open slather? Yeah. There'd be some sticking points here. There would have been some conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Now, T's in a relationship. (laughs) T's in a relationship with a guy that makes Ryan Gosling look like a pig. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he's he's all right in the eyes. So, uh, is there anything that's none of his business? I actually have to agree with Sean on the whole bank account thing. Like, he doesn't need to know how much I'm spending on Christmas decorations and clothes and all that sort of stuff. (laughs) So, So you're like a secret tinsel. So, you're cohabiting. Do you have a joint bank account? No, not yet. We're still kind of fresh in that. So, I Mm. think, yeah. That will wait a little yeah, bit longer. Yeah, you just contribute well, equally to Christmas the... decorations are you buying? Are you like a glass bauble, Venetian glass bauble girl? Well, yeah, I'm going all out because this is like my first yeah. um, place that I've lived out of home for a while oh, that I can so kind of deck out. Yeah. So I'm going to like, yeah. Deck the halls. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, what, so it's been right. a bit at Bed, Bath & Table. But oh, yeah. What's that got 25% off Christmas stuff, though? What's the most expensive stuff, thing you've Sorry. bought for your Christmas it's a bargain. decorations? I'm not saying... <gasps> It's none, none of your business. I'm a government relationship. Sean, you're right. Women are right. They <laughs> yell at you. <laughs> This is all sparked off um, uh, red flags about yes. whether people are tracking you on your phone or not mm-hmm. in a relationship. Sam, imagine someone tracking someone on their phone. I'll find you. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening in your relationship with Conrad? Uh, yeah, I've got Conrad on Find My iPhone. Mm. But it's not just him. I've got friends as well. But it, it's, Friends? Yeah, it's super handy because you just know where they are. You don't have to send, like, the, oh, are you on your way home kind of questions. Like, you just know. But, okay, so your friend, right? So you're, um, uh, you've checked that she's at home and you're going, yes. oh, hey, I'm going to come over. And then she goes, oh, no, I'm not at home at the zoo and you know that she's lying well then that's, she would then, never then, go to the no, zoo <laughs> that's when I get on the phone to another friend I was like can you believe <laughs> can you believe Ellen's like, just lied yeah. to me so you check where your other friend is and go you're home mate. <laughs> and she goes yeah yeah I'm home and, and no, she she's goes, at the no. zoo <laughs> she's <laughs> at the <laughs> zoo so what They're would happen they both at the zoo together they didn't invite you <laughs> if we go back to co- you tracking Conrad what would happen if you, you looked at it one day and he was somewhere that yes, he didn't say really what. out of mm. character or you're like what would you well, question like, him Do you, are you like why were you there yes and no either he didn't mention it no he didn't mention when he comes home I know that he would probably be buying me a beautiful engagement ring. <laughs> in Meriden. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't believe in that. Okay. Um, Luke's in Armadale. Hi, Luke. Hi, guys. Okay. Hello. What are your thoughts on this, Luke? I have the tracking app for my wife and I, and it's not just her. I have my wife. I have my mum. Our whole family. I have my whole um, wife side of the family. Do you have me? So we can kind of see. <laughs> Ken, if you want. Uh, add me. <laughs> Luke, what's the purpose of doing that? Safety more than anything, just so it has like crash detection. So if anyone's in a crash, you can kind of be yeah. alerted of it. Oh, you know what? This more, is a yeah, thing. Just a safety thing. And Sean, we, we don't even I was know. driving to work yeah. Yeah. just yep. the other week because I start work at quarter to four in the morning. Yeah. So I was driving across the freeway and I just yeah. get this text from my wife saying, Can you slow down? You're speeding. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, I've got to get my girlfriend to work. <laughs> <laughs> that wow. is, Luke, that's hilarious. But so she got, a, she, she got a, a notification that you were going too fast on her phone. No, I think she was just checking she it because I woke up and said how tired I was. So she was like so watching funny. me the whole way yeah. to make so sure I got funny. to work. Oh, that's she loves you so much. She wants to make sure that you get to work. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the technology in these phones, yes. we don't. We, we everyone's got an iPhone, right? We are using ten percent of the things that yeah. we can do because we don't know about it. Mm. So you know, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, Thanks, special, Luke. It's good. Yeah, it's that's, good that, that's a beauty. Julie's in Singleton. Morning, Jules. Good morning. Hi, okay, hey, Jules. Jules. Is the phone tracking a thing for you too? Uh, yes, in a part of well, my ex husband yes. was tracking me. Oh, really? Um, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I found out I was one night downloading photos onto off my phone onto the computer to free up space. Yeah. And I found a couple of pictures of 
my bank accounts that I have with girlfriends that I went away with. Yeah. Yes. And so I looked into it. It was on a, from a website. So I got into the website. Uh, stupidly, he uses his used his same password for everything. Oh. So I'm, I got into the... <laughs> Fuzzy Tits 69. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it was an overseas website that he was paying $90 a month. Oh, to. yes. And hmm. in the comments, you put in, you can put in all sorts of words, the, day, love, mm-hmm. like, yep. yeah. whatever word you put in. So if I use words. that in any sentence yeah. or any oh. conversation... It tracks your keyword. That's a keyword, and he gets an alert to you using he that. He gets an alert <gasps> and can see that message. So that would open up Surely. the message that I've sent to wherever. So if you just Whoa. said, I just had a sandwich, I love it. It was so delicious. He would have got an alert about love to do with the sandwich. Exactly. <gasps> yes. Wow, Joe. what kind of software is that? Yeah, Sean, sure. Sure. Yeah. And That's how much is it per month? Is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it in that purchases? So, obviously, you weren't aware until this point that he was oh tracking God. your every move. This is no. a ma- massive red flag so, to you then, so Julie. What happened yeah. then? What happened then? Um, I wiped all the keywords and put in a few suggested keywords, yep. choice words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Changed his password. Yes. Um, so, he was still getting the alerts yeah. but couldn't get in. Yeah, yes. okay, okay, and okay. <laughs> Yeah, so he, I eventually confronted him about it, and, and um, I found, yeah, then I worked out he had a bank account which I didn't know about where the ninety dollars a month was coming from. Yes, oh. so yeah, so I found out it was probably a good seven months had been going before I'd found it. So, so yeah, really you've had a co- so so was was that control evident to you, or was this the yes. first clue that he was sort of doing it behind the scenes? Um. It was there was things popping up where he wanted to know where I was all the time. Yeah, and yeah, yeah things like we'd been married for a good twenty odd years. Oh, um, wow. yeah, so it wasn't wow. like a short time. So wait, there was because well, I mean, that's pretty I mean weird. think about it. The technology's I mean, yes. it's not uh, relationships now. You get that right now. Yeah. I think this is a thing. Of, yes, a, sort of start all the middle of a relationship, but twenty years. So wait, there. When did it start? Do you think? Well, um, it was probably about six months. He'd probably been doing it for about six months. He'd spoke to a friend out. who was doing yeah. it on his okay. wife. So, and so that's where he got the idea from. Was he cheating? Because usually when something like that happens yeah. and they start accusing you and you're not doing anything, like, was he cheating? Did you find out? No, mm, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. So just a massive yeah. lack of trust then by yeah. this, or, the, or that yeah. control of wanting to know where you were and who you were talking to? Just control and wanted to know yeah. what I was spending, what, who I was with, what I was doing, yep. where yeah, I red was. Flag. I mean, for Sean, it's quite yeah. easy. It's meetings at home or at dusk. Yeah. <laughs> Buying <laughs> candles. <laughs> oh, Julie, so, so you got out of that relationship, obviously, Jules. BWS, no. Uh, yes. Onwards yes, and upwards. <laughs> oh, sorry, and BWS. Sorry, sorry. I didn't want to get the information correct. Mm. <laughs> Responsible. Thanks, I Julie. Hope she's not Julie. Up. This is the Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. I finally had a victory yesterday mm. in my 54 day battle. Yeah. I ordered two t-shirts. They weren't cheap. Mm. They were quite expensive t-shirts. Um, Mate, tell me about them. Black Friday's been going for three weeks. Hey, what are you yeah. doing? Hey. 54 days ago, there was no she Black Friday. Them. She ordered when Black Friday started. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Exactly. Um, uh, what were the shirts? Talk to me. So, uh, they were just f- f- a couple of fun t-shirts. Oh, I love one, a fun one t-shirt. said on it, wear um, fun skirt? disco drummer of the decade, oh. and the other said, suck my baguette. <laughs> oh, sure. So that was funny, right? <laughs> and so, sorry. You just said they were expensive. Shouldn't it they be? They were expensive. And really? More than a, more than a hundred dollars each. And shouldn't Sean? that be, more than a hundred dollars each? Instead of baguette, shouldn't that be panini? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a, it was a, the the company has a French name, oh. although they it was started by an Australian. I've, I've delved yeah, deep. Yeah, started by an Australian girl who lived in London. So the, the headquarters are in London. <laughs> So I ordered, I waited three weeks, nothing happened. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. and they weren't a pre-order, they yeah. were in stock ready to yeah. go. And so then I emailed them and said, oh, I'm waiting. Uh, any, yeah, what's just, happening? Just here with my bras on, just waiting just for sure. Just what's happening. And then they sent back a thing saying, oh, sorry, your order, they were in two different warehouses oh. and we had to consolidate it. Right. So um, they had we'll, the baguette shirts in one warehouse and the other and the, shirts yeah, in the other. And the drummer one in the other. Sense, yeah. And so I'm like, okay. And so then they said, mm. um, we'll send it. 
um, uh, within a few days' time. Mm. And so you should... I'd paid for Express International Shipping, which said it should be here in three days. Yeah. And so it'll be with you early next week. I'm like, oh, that's terrific. And so I waited for them to dispatch it and let me know. And nothing mm-hmm. happened. Nothing mm-hmm. happened. Nothing happened. After six weeks, I uh, messaged them again and mm. said, I'm still waiting. Um, presumably, um, you've managed to get it from one warehouse to the other now. Like, how long does it take to... How far apart are these warehouses that we can't get the two shirts in the one order? And they said, oh, we're so sorry. We'll send you a present uh, to make up for it. I'm like, oh, I, don't, I don't want a present. No, I want, what if I want like my car? order. It was a pair of socks, Nathan, oh. they, which they did send me. Are they good? No. Baguettes? No, they're no. not great socks. Um, and then, so then I waited and, and I got increasingly furious. So then I started shaming them on Instagram, just uh, just running through the story and tagging them into the posts of just saying, because I said, is this company, mm. has anybody ordered from this company? Yeah, because legit, they yeah. advertise heavily on Instagram. Yeah. I'm like, are they a real the real deal? And people went, yeah, I ordered from them a few years ago. It was all good. And then somebody sent me through the Trustpilot reviews, mm. which said their service mm. is woeful. I'm like, they are all accurate. So you got it or not? Um, so then I had to threaten them, Nathan. Yeah. I had to threaten them. So I basically said, so they because they sent a shipping number that, and I followed it for a week. Nothing happened. Did not move an ounce. Didn't move an inch. I'm like, that's not right. So I went back to them. They lied. They just sent mm. me a bogus shipping number yeah. that for Did a company they that they really? don't use. They don't use this company. Oh. And I'm like, so what is that about? So then I basically ultimatum, I said, you have 72 hours to provide me with an accurate shipping number that is trackable and moving, or I'm going to contact my bank for a chargeback. That's, and then all of a sudden, bang. It happened. Mm. So the the uh, the um, confirmation came through. The tracking number came through. The order arrived yesterday after three days. I'm like, so it was that easy all along. Six weeks before then. Six yeah. weeks. Seven. That it was seven. Seven. seven Fifty four days. And that's the people that can be bothered. Fifty four days. Going to the extreme of contacting people yeah. and digging around and, and finding Honestly, and they stuff. didn't do anything yeah. until I started yeah. talking about yeah. it on Instagram. Yeah. Well. I'm like. What is wrong with you people? Well, what sort of business are you running? Okay, so mine is I went on to a trusted site that's been going for over a decade, Frugo. So if you ever um, Google something, and then it's basically an online marketplace, okay. which right. is a lot, a lot of places doing it. Yeah, it's, it's a trusted Australian site, so I've seen it for years and years and years. Um, and it's nothing to do with them, actually. So I end up ordering, um, you know on MasterChef where they use those blowtorch, butane blowtorch Oh, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, anyway, as you know, you discovered through um, Mystery Word that one of my favourite um, things is brass. Mm. I love anything yeah, brass. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, and I found a brass one, a metal one. It was like oh, okay. real legit. And I thought, oh, my God, because the other ones are all full of plastic. And anyway, it was like 70 bucks. I went, no worries, ordered it. So that was a month ago. And it, it's been going and going and going for ages. And then something caught my attention. It was the 9th of December, I think so it's it been was. Dispatched. So it's not, yeah, sorry, it's been dispatched. Yeah, so it's been dispatched. November? No, 9th of November, it was just sitting here in Australia for 10 days. So you're, you're tracking the, yeah. the, and I'm going, the shipping, yeah? Come on, Nick, it's not just going to sit there. It's, yeah. And, and then, anyway, then, then, it went, then it went through, custom, uh, through clear, uh, customs clearance, and then I went back a step back and then went through customs clearance again. I was like, wait there. So I was picking up. not going Mm. through customs clearance twice. Long story short, done a little bit of investigation because I thought that maybe I was ripped off by the seller. Mm -hmm. But no. There's a delivery company here in Australia that does not deliver any of the stuff that they're used for. So what I'm guessing is that they're, they're, they're giving the dirt cheap quote to these companies like Catch of the Day, if it was Timu, mm. anything like that. You know, I, I don't even know what sort of companies are involved, but they're, obviously I think they're undercutting the other to get the people business. to get their business, yep. and no one ever gets their packages. It is unbelievable. It's called PL, uh, PL or PF, PFL Logistics is, the, um, is the, uh, the delivery company. When you Google the address, it takes you to a car park in Perth. There's nothing there. Well, is you there a van? Is there one number. van with a whole lot of parcels in it? <laughs> there is no That's phone the number. There is no... Yes, and then, so there's no way of contacting yep, them. And then even the, the, the one before that, Sun Yu, same mm. thing. You cannot con- contact them. And then there's another one that's now sprouted on the bo- bottom of my tracking, which now takes you to another link for another place, which is called Freightster. Freightster? Like... Fraud yes. state, fraud yep. state yep. Nelly. I've then Googled my tracking number. It's a fraudulent tracking number that they give out because so been, other yep, people yep, have complained yep. about the same then, tracking number. Um, I Googled both the companies, and it is thousands upon thousands of people that never got their packages. And I'm like, how is this existing in Australia? 
And how are these companies not getting the heads up by their yes. angry customers? That well, has been going a, on for years. Thing. So yeah. what would be the answer to I that? I don't know. Literally, I'm not expecting to get this package. I just got an update yesterday as well. It says uh, it's um, on, on the 25th, and it gives me some bull crap about it yeah. being somewhere else. I would say there's else. a liability on the, the seller to provide you. If, if, the, if they're yep. engaging a shipping company yep. that's not delivering it, they have to... Yep. So I've been in contact with them, and they haven't contacted me back yet. Yeah. Um, so that's another bridge. But uh, look, I'm expecting, fully expecting to be refunded. A lot of people were refunded, but mm. this is the but thing. A lot of people didn't ever get to a solution. Yeah. Think about that. I didn't think there would be a business that could actually steal your stuff. I know. And I don't know whether it's, it's amazing, happening. It? I don't know. You know, this is all allegedly. But there's but a lot of sus stuff going on. Yeah. Yeah. Shame Insane. them on Instagram. Uh, Lisa's in Lansdale. Hello. Morning, guys. Hi, Hi, I've been waiting to name and shame this company. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I want to tell everyone to make sure you order things through PayPal. They've been yes. very helpful. I don't do it so, online unless it's PayPal. Yeah. Exactly. This company is called Bella's Treasures, right? And <laughs> oh. it was all over social media. Yes. Allegedly, an Australian company, we've got beautiful jewellery on sale. We're closing down our business because we want to spend more time with our family, oh. yep. right? Yeah. Gemstones, pearls, silver... And um, gold, I love gemstones. Oh, right? yeah, and I thought, I'll, I'll get quite a few things for presents and Christmas. Yeah. It comes from China, all plastic, mm. not a gemstone in sight, mm. a whole lot of plastic. I was sent an uh, email to them. There's some email in Spanish. You get, they're not even, I don't know where they are. Yeah. And then I contacted PayPal and they said, right, you need to get your money back. So yes. I contacted this company. And, w- and they said, okay, we'll send send it all back to us. I had to pay for postage. Yeah. And when we you get... You had to post um, the plastic the, back. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I had to post oh. the plastic back and send a photo. Yeah. And send a picture of the, um, you know, yeah. uh, Australia Post thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And we'll refund you in two weeks. Six weeks in, I still oh. haven't got my money. No. Right, and they've got the jewellery back, and they're still advertising all over Facebook, Instagram, 75% sale. Yeah. So how has PayPal right? helped you yeah. in this circumstance? No, they 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 the they yeah. So I've emailed them um, this business again and again, and I said, have you got my, have you received the products? Yes. Two weeks' time, we'll give you your refund. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I've emailed them every week, where's my money? Yep. And I said, I'll be reporting this again to PayPal, and they, um, nothing. So I did it again about two days ago, and I put it back to PayPal, and I said, I still haven't got my yeah. money. Yeah. Yep. So, so PayPal's now on to them to well, try and get well, me PayPal back my money. Well, PayPal should just refund they you. Should. Yeah, oh, well, they yeah do hopefully too. they will. Yeah. But yeah. I said, this is an absolute scam. It's so so what was the business name again? What was it called? Bella's Treasures. Bella's Treasures. Bella's Treasures. Unbelievable. Yeah. So when you see so a post that says, them, guys. I have seen other posts like that, oh, we're closing down yeah. our much-loved family yeah. business, and you're going, yeah, can yeah. I just give everyone a yeah, tip, be right? be sceptical about that. If you're on a site and you've never been on it before, I'd quickly just go down to contact us. Yes. Go down there and see yeah, if it is easily yeah. to contact them. If there's no phone number, and I have to say, Amazon, you can't phone someone. Yes. I've tried. But like, but they, 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 yeah. they will phone you back. If you try, uh, yeah, if, if you get in there and it looks like it's going to be hard to communicate with them, uh, it's yes. pretty much Also run them through Trustpilot because Trustpilot um, is, a, is a review thing um, and it, it will give you the honest reviews. And that is a copy and search with the, your tracking number, all yeah. that sort of stuff, and they'll pop up. We've also um, got a Bella in our team, and I've noticed she's doing a lot of plastic stuff. <laughs> like that. No, she said they're emeralds. Let's go to yeah. Nat in Wembley. Hi, Nat. Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Nat. Nat. Okay, have you been through this sort of pain? Yes, and I wish that Trustpilot was on my radar yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, so when I got engaged, I um, decided to buy my bridesmaid dresses online. Because yeah. um, who cares about yours? What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? I mean, I think back and I'm like, what was I thinking? Anyway, fell in love with these beautiful dresses. I had quite a big bridal party, had five bridesmaids. Oh. So, you know, sent off all the measurements yeah. and, you know, really excited and waiting for these dresses and, you know, ordered them a decent amount of time yeah. before the wedding. And we started getting closer to the wedding day and, you know, sort of they hadn't arrived and I'm emailing with very poor communication back and long delays and then I sort of updated the status that they'd been made. I thought, fantastic. Mm. So now I'm just waiting for them to come. Keep checking. It says they've been dispatched, whatever that means. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And by now it's about two weeks out from the wedding. Nothing back to my email. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. I think we were now yeah. about 
10 days out from the wedding, I get this email. I think, fantastic. And it says, you know, dear Nat, um, great news. I think, oh, good. They say, here's a refund. And I'm thinking, I don't want a refund. (laughs) My bridesmaids are freaking out. We're going to have a naked wedding. Um, I was actually quite calm. And indeed, I did get the refund. So I wasn't one of those poor people who's fighting for the refund. But I didn't want the refund. I now have naked bridesmaids a week out from a wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was, yeah, actually quite calm. We just did a little quick, uh, borrowed some dresses. But oh, okay. the best man's speech, when he toasted how lovely the bridesmaids looked, mm. I think it also included a comment about the fact that it was lovely they actually had clothes yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That. That's amazing. That's so this is you don't need before thing when the Supre wedding. shut down. You could yeah. have just solved that one shop mm, of Supre. Mm, um, I hear. Fashion yeah. for every day. I know we go what past you're, sauce, you're going <laughs> to. Uh, thanks, Nat. Joanne's in Bankshire Grove. Morning, Joe. How are you going? Hey, Joe. What have you got for us? Well, I sort of, I've got two. So when you were just saying um, the one that Nathan just said, yeah. the, um, PFL, yeah. Mm. PFL that, yeah. So I actually did get my delivery yesterday. It was from Timu, but yep. they did deliver. Yep. But like when this vehicle pulled up in my driveway, I'm like, who is that in my driveway? Mm. And it was the loudest clapped out <laughs> car pulled up in my driveway. I won't say yep. the yeah. nationality yep. who was driving it. Yep. And then like dropped it off. No dramas. And I've had a couple from them, and I've been okay. I've yeah. actually got my stuff. Yeah, but right. But there are, there are people that have gotten their stuff. There are people that have gotten a photo of their yep. stuff saying it's been delivered, but it's not any any wall that's outside of their house. Yeah. So, yeah. They're, they're, so some people get them, some people, people don't. Yes, mm. yes. Well, and then you yeah. try and chase them, and then every day yeah. they go, uh, every morning you get like, a, it, it's out for delivery. Every morning yeah. it resets, out for delivery. Yeah. 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 Well, I had one that I ordered pots and pans online, mm. and I got charged, I think it was like $25, and then $98 come out, and another $98 <sighs> come out. Oh. And I'm trying to track my package, and I contacted Australia Post, and they went, yeah, we've got your package. And they, I said, well, she said, what is it? And I told her, and she went, well, it only weighs about 200 grand. Oh, well, and, and I've got a fake you. Gucci scarf. You've got a fake a Gucci scarf? <laughs> How exciting. <laughs> Not when you want pots and pans. Pans. Well, no. She hasn't tried cooking with it. <laughs> and I asked them for a refund, and they said to me, oh, we'll give you 50%. Uh, 50 no, percent. No, I want the whole what? lot. So yeah, what's my happened? bank got it all back for me. Oh, yeah, my bank got all the money back for me. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I've had all the emails between the two oh. people. So These yeah. are great cautionary Sorry. tales, everybody. Thank you, everybody, Joanne. Especially this time of year, just be really careful. Yes. Um, you know, because like, a yes. lot of people are baking on their Christmas presents. And in my situation, if this is you know, po- a possibility yeah. that a delivery company is going to flog your stuff, mm. it's going to be after Christmas yeah, until right. you, and yeah, you're going to exactly. have to replace them in the, in the meantime. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so everyone just be careful. Google. Go. Google is your friend. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au. Nova.